Hi Stewie, it's a bit of a bright one today. Okay, so this is our pond. So there's a goldfish in there now. Look at him, lovely little boy, having a nice time. He was trying to breed with these too much. So I was like, right, you can come out. So he's in solitary confinement at the moment. So that's the filter there, just running off of a pump. But I've got a rack system here, well, over there, I'm going to fill up with clay balls, and that is going to, I'm going to grow elephant ears, so that'll eat up the nitrates and have a pump to that. And here, I've got a bin. So that is a 45 litre bin, and in the side, there we are, I've put a flange, got a flange off of eBay, and a 45 degree bend, and it goes down to there. So I can obviously have it so it goes to the middle if I want, but considering there'll be a good flow going around, it hasn't got to be in the middle. So... I might have it tucked away at the back because then it's a bit more hidden, just come straight out and then a 90 degree bend. But in the middle it might be better, so that's partly the middle, but it's quite discreet. So I'll put a 45 degree bend on there going straight down so that there's no like rough edges on there. But now I'll put the pump, so I might do that in a minute, put the pump in there and it will be acting like a gravity fed. And then there I'm going to build a shelf build a shelf, load a K1 underneath the shelf. The shelf will have a load of holes in it and then the pump can sit on top of the shelf and then it will come up through. And then at the bottom I'll have another pump and then I'll have an air stone in there. And then every now and again to clean it, I'll turn it off, turn the air stone on so it gets all agitates all of the K1 and then use the other pump to get rid of all the muck. And then, so I'll need a valve on this, on the outside or on the inside. Well, I'll probably just put a screw, get a, a screw cap on the inside, which I've got, and then that'll stop it coming in. So actually that will mean, ah, uh, yeah, I need a way of stopping it. So I'll, I'll get a valve on the outside. So I'm gonna get my hands wet each time. I'll have to come up with a solution. But yeah, we got a, a gravity fed mechanical filter going into our biological filter of um, ceramic media. Bye bye.
people know their neighbours more. You know? Then the kids get more exercise and that people are healthier and the air quality is better. So we know this now and we kind of we kind of always knew it but now we really get it. So there's been a massive increase in improvements to And so my Leandrian journey now extended effortlessly. Now extended to the trees growing on the upper slopes of the Primiero and Piave valleys, where Italy leaches into Austria. At Paneveggio, on the edge of summer pasture, the perfectly parallel trunks of alpine spruce stand as straight as pencil strokes from a sure hand. Their wood is light, flexible, and very strong, and this has always made it exceptionally good at transmitting the tiny vibrations and violin strings through its body. And for these qualities, the wood is known as Lenio Virivananta, or resonance wood. When Andrea Amati was working to perfect his model for the violin in 16th century Cremona, timber was as valuable as oil has been to us in the 20th and 21st century. Officials in the Habsburg Empire protected the overall condition of the forest by only allowing approved boschieri or woodcutters to work there. The first chapter in the life of any old Cremona violin was written by boschieri. They were local men, men who knew the height and girth of every tree on their patch, wore injury like a badge of office, and were tough enough and hungry enough to work that dangerous territory, never mind the risk of landslides, avalanches, or flash floods. You might call those boschieri lumberjacks if you were in Canada, but that's an odd name for men who also farmed the mountain slopes and had almost as many words for different qualities of grass as the Inuit is said to have for snow. Timber merchants were obliged to rely on these multitasking men for the first stage of the long process that would deliver timber to their customers. 